Hello, everyone. This is Program Coordinator T.J. Hicks, and on behalf of Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's virtual lecture. We're very excited to be finishing up our culinary journey series with local chef Shannon Bush. Before we get started, we just wanted to take a moment to thank the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory Foundation and all of our foundation donors for your continued support. It is this support that allows us to continue providing the type of high quality programming we know you expect. We do have some exciting things coming up soon, so be sure to check out the library's website and sign up for our email updates to hear about everything we have planned uh, in the weeks ahead and also into January and February. We'll have some announcements about some uh, new programming that we think you will all enjoy. And for those of you curious, we're happy to let you know that a recorded version of today's program will be available to view on the library's YouTube channel within about a week. Uh, and now to introduce today's speaker. Chef Shannon B Bush has uh, been a plant-based chef for over 30 years. She has worked as an executive chef, head baker, caterer, and culinary instructor. She loves to demonstrate the many benefits of plant-based eating and to prove that healthy food can be delicious. If you have enjoyed this series of programs, be sure to let us know, as we depend on your feedback to let us know what you're interested in seeing in the future. And one final note, today's program will conclude with a question and answer session. You can use the Q&A or chat feature on Zoom to type in your question. We also have a small group of socially distanced library employees, uh, volunteers here today. Um, so you may hear some questions from them throughout the program. But without further ado, it is my pleasure to hand things over to Chef Shannon Bush. <laughs> Thank you, TJ. Um, today is the last day of our series, so it's kind of bittersweet for me. Um, I've had so much fun doing this these last three months, and I'm kind of sad it's coming to an end, to be honest. Um, I'm ready to move on to the next country uh, next month, but uh, I guess we could talk about that later. But um, it's been great fun, and uh, I appreciate all of you watching from home. Um, today, plant-based Mexican food. One of my favorite foods of all time. Uh, growing up as a vegetarian, we ate Mexican food at home all the time, several times a week. Um, one, it's delicious, it can be very healthy, and two, it's a really, really easy food to convert to uh, meatless and now um, meat and dairy free. So I'm going to share with you some of my favorite recipes, and uh, you uh, have access to the recipes today, but I do have a recipe I'm going to share with you in a bit that is not on there, and um, if you have questions about the recipe, you can always send me an email for more information. But we're going to get started right now with some soup. And I call this soup frijole soup, mean soup. Um, kind of a boring name, but if any of you have uh, any suggestions, let me know. Holy frijoles. Holy frijoles, I love it. Thank you. Okay, that's the new name. So here we go, holy frijoles soup. Uh, I'm going to start off, I have a little bit of grapeseed oil in my pan. And I have a little jalapeno in here I'm going to set aside. But I'm going to put some diced onion in here to saute. Get that going. And as soon as my onions start to brown, I'm going to add some fresh garlic. And I think I've told you before, I do like to use fresh garlic cloves at home, but here with the class, it's just a little easier to have the stuff in the jar. But the garlic cooks much faster than the onions, so I always wait until the onions are mostly cooked before I add the garlic. So most bean soups um, have whole beans in them. This soup is different because it, I'm using refried beans. And uh, if you want to make this at home and just buy a can of refried beans to make your life easier, just make sure you read the label. 
Um, most refried beans that you buy off the shelf have lard in them, which with plant-based cooking, we, we really don't want in our food. So there are plenty of options. There's one that says vegetarian, like this one, that is uh, lard-free. And there's also another one that's easy to find, and it says no fat refried beans, and that is also lard-free. So in the recipe I gave you guys, um, I called for a large can of refried beans and a small can of crushed tomatoes. So as luck would have it, when I was shopping this morning, I could only find a large can of crushed tomatoes and small cans of the refried beans. So I, if that looks a little different than my recipe, yes, I'm aware. You smell the onions? I also, when I'm making soups, another tip is to, or a tip, is to let them brown a little bit and form a little bit of a brown crust on the bottom of the pan. Don't let them burn, but that little bit of brown crust will really flavor your soups and your broths nicely once you add um, liquid to the mixture. So if you can just keep a sharp eye on your, whatever you're browning, and make sure you add some liquid before it burns. That dark brown crust that forms on the bottom of the pan will dissolve into your soup and give it a fabulous flavor. In French cooking, there's a name for it. They call it deglazing your pan. All right, my onions are getting soft, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a generous amount of crushed garlic, about a tablespoon. Perfect food to, uh, for today. Hot soup on a cold, blustery day. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, um, but here in the desert, we have rain and wind today. And the temperatures, I think, are in the high 50s. Is that right? Yeah, so a little cooler than we're used to. So a perfect day for soup. It's looking good, it smells good. Now it's time to add some liquids to our mixture. So I'm gonna start off, in the recipe I gave you, I called for four cups of vegetable broth. But I'm gonna start off with um, about two cups today. One, two. And if you make this recipe, you can buy vegetable broth that's um, ready-made, already in the carton, just ready to pour. Um, I prefer to use uh, a paste. And the reason is because it's really easy to, to adjust the strength of flavor that you want. Um, so this paste, it's one of my favorites about a teaspoon of paste um, flavors one cup of water. So 
I recommend getting something like this rather than the liquid, and that way you can uh, fine tune your, your flavors a little better. Okay, so there's our vegetable broth. And now I'm gonna add some crushed tomatoes. And again, um, my recipe calls for a small can. This is a large can, so I'm not gonna put the whole thing in here. that much. All right. I actually prefer to uh, put my spices in um, before I add the liquid, but I just forgot today. So it's not the end of the world, but normally I would sprinkle the spices over the uh, onion, mix onion and garlic mixture. It really helps release um, the flavors in it. But um, I'm gonna put about a teaspoon each, one of ancho chili pepper powder, and another teaspoon of uh, California chili pepper powder. different uh, chili pepper. I don't know if you can see or not, but uh, this one is more like a, an orangey color, and this one is a really dark red, the ancho. It's very dark. So the ancho has a, a deeper, richer, almost like a smoky flavor to it, and uh, the other one, um, milder. Good amount. The great thing about this, what are we calling it, holy for holy soup, is it comes together really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and add the refried beans and a can of diced green chilies. Okay, so the refried beans, rather than uh, adding whole beans, they actually thicken the soup for you. So the beauty of this soup, which you'll see in a moment, is all the great toppings you put on top. You can get creative and get all kinds of delicious things on top of the soup. And the soup is nice and thick, so your sprinkling of cheese and the different things, they're not going to sink right to the bottom. They're going to stay on top and look delicious. One can. And you just slowly need to break the clumps of the refried beans apart. And it's easier to do as it gets a little warmer. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, that was exciting, getting all that stirred in. It's 
So as soon as it's fully heated, it's actually done. So super fast and easy. I know life is busy for most of us, and um, this is a homemade, healthy soup you can throw together in about 15 minutes after work when you, you know, on a busy night. Ah, thank you. So it's up to you how thick you want your soup to be. I'm going to leave this one nice and thick. And like I mentioned, it'll make it easy to put all the uh, toppings on it. Okay. So always taste your food. Make sure you've got your seasonings right. So I'm just going to do a quick taste. See if I can do it without burning my mouth. Okay. I think you'll like it. All right. So Here's where you get to have fun with it. You can put it in your bowl and all kinds of great toppings can be used. I'm going to start off by sprinkling a little bit of um, a plant-based cheddar cheese. This brand is Follow Your Heart. So a little bit of plant-based cheddar. This brand is pretty tasty. And for those of you that are new to buying plant-based products, 10 years ago, the stuff tasted awful. But I have to tell you, you've never picked a better time to try plant-based food because now products like this, they taste really good. Things have come a long way very quickly. The other thing I like to put on here are some corn chips. And some chunks of fresh avocado floating in there. Mm. Get creative, use whatever you enjoy eating. Yum. And now it needs a little color. So you can do some cilantro leaves. But I happen to have a little pico de gallo here. And that's going to go really well on there. Just a little sprinkling get some of the red. All right, easy. I'll put this over here. I don't know if it's possible to get that on camera or not, but um, for those of you that are here with me today, you get to try it at the end of class. So that was easy, holy, free, holy soup. And now we're going to go on to the next one. The next thing we're going to make are what I call green enchiladas. And they are easy enchiladas because I get tired of burning my fingers heating up the tortillas. So. I have a really easy way for you to put your enchiladas together without burning your fingers on the hot tortillas. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So let me get a few things out of the way. So this worked out, making this recipe today worked out great for me because I'm actually going to be making my family's dinner tonight while I'm here with you. So I'm just going to start off by greasing this baking dish and I'm using some avocado oil spray 
and get my things here. going to be using these great little street taco size tortillas. They are so delicious and you can use them so many ways. I debated today on whether or not I would make my tortilla soup or my newly named holy frijoles soup. Um, but these are great for using in tortilla soup if you ever make tortilla soup. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is quarter my tortillas. So I don't know if you're familiar with making enchiladas, but you have to heat the tortillas ahead of time to make them pliable enough to roll with your filling. And it always involves burnt fingertips in my house. So we're going to work around that and uh, use another option. So one thing I'm going to do is um, these enchiladas are going to have a plant-based chicken and a refried bean filling. And to make the beans easy to use, I'm going to thin them with some water. So I just have a can of refried beans that I emptied into here. Going to add a little bit of water and mix it up so it's nice and thin. And that way it'll be easy to use. So bear with me while I mix these up a little bit. So this is the recipe that's not on the recipe link that you're going to get today. But these are really easy and uh, if you have any questions you can send me an email at uh, chefshannonsway at gmail.com. But I don't think you're going to need to ask for help because like I said it's pretty easy. So a can of refried beans, a large bag of uh, small corn tortillas, and then some plant-based chicken. This is optional, but I just thought I'd throw it in today. This is a, a really nice brand. It's called Light Life. And you can find this at um, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods. I think Ralph's carries it as well. Um, but uh, it's called Light Life Smart Tenders. And they just come as little strips, and I diced them up and cooked them with a little bit of um, garlic earlier. So they're just thin little crispy pieces. So we've got our beans nice and thin. And then the other thing is the sauce. And that's super easy. Two ingredients. It's a can of... What's it called? <laughs> Green enchilada sauce. And I chose a medium heat. It does come mild, medium, or hot. And uh, this is a medium heat green chili sauce. And um, I mixed it with some vegan sour cream. So super easy. When you do that, it turns into this kind of funky pea green color. But it tastes delicious, trust me. So what I'm going to do to make these enchiladas, I'm going to start off adding some of the sauce to our greased pan. Just make sure it's spread around a little bit. And then this is all you have to do instead of rolling those tortillas up. Just make a layer of these cut tortilla pieces. Easy, easy and fast. Okay, so I've got a layer of sauce, layer of the tortillas, and now I'm just going to sprinkle some of this uh, plant-based chicken that I cooked earlier. And now just, um, just some beans here and there. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just going to layer. Super easy. And 
And like I said, thank you. My family thanks you. This is our dinner tonight. We'll just take it home and pop it in the oven. Yeah, like 350? Yeah, uh, maybe a little hotter, maybe 375. And you just want it to get nice and bubbly and browned at the edges. So there's another layer of tortillas that, I've, that I have down. So now I'm going to add just a little more sauce in the middle. I don't want it to be dry in the middle. And let me spread it out a little bit. This sounds probably kind of too simple, too boring, but I want you to trust me that it's going to be delicious. Please give it a try if you're even remotely interested. All right. I actually um, made a pan of these this morning because I didn't want my friends at the library here to go hungry after class. Um, and in their pan of enchiladas, I actually used black beans, whole black beans, instead of the refried beans. So use whatever's in your pantry, or if you have a preference on the beans, whatever you like. You said whole black beans? Yeah, whole black beans. And you didn't mash them? No, I didn't mash them. I just rinsed them really well. Black beans come in water, and they really, um, it turns into a heavy black water. So with, when I cook with black beans, I like to rinse them really well, get all of that off. Otherwise, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's probably a lot of nutrients in the water, but it'll turn whatever you're cooking a kind of a murky grayish black color, which isn't pretty. All right, here we go with another layer. One last layer. Oh, that bean soup is just sitting there. Somebody needs to eat it. All right. Then I need just a few more tortillas. One more tortilla. Okay, the rest of the sauce goes over the top. a little bit. You want to make sure all of your tortillas are covered with the sauce. Otherwise, the little whatever's sticking out of the sauce is going to burn before your enchiladas are ready. How much sour cream did you put in there? I put one container of sour cream and the container size was yeah, probably. I brought one with me that is actually the smaller size. So this one Oh, this one's 12 ounces, but I used the bigger one, larger size than this. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of the cheddar. Okay, that's ready to pop in the oven. Didn't go under the carpeting. Nobody saw that, right? Okay. All right. Let me set this aside and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all 
ready to be eaten. The finished product and you need to garnish it and it's going to be delicious. We can put some pico de gallo on it, some cilantro leaves, some um, jalapeno, some onions, but it's rich, tastes decadent and delicious so I hope you give it a try. In fact maybe I should serve some up. And if you cook it and let it sit up, it will cut just like a, you know, you can cut it into bars like a, or squares like a lasagna. So let's put that on there. Let's make it look beautiful. What do you think, a little pico de gallo? Okay. Yeah, that way we add lots of color. A little pop of flavor. There we go. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. All right, so I'll move this aside. I'm going to run out of room. So there we go. We've got our soup. We've got our enchiladas. And now it's going to be time to move on to our street tacos. I need a bigger table. So I'm going to make two kinds of street tacos for you today. The first one is going to be roasted potato and uh, beyond beef. And our second one, and please, I know I'm mangling the pronunciation, but Birria tacos. <laughs> How do you properly say it? Birria. Thank you. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I don't have that ability to roll the hours like that, but uh, it sounds wonderful when you say it. All right, so the birria and this one. Um, so our first taco is actually going to have a chipotle roux in it. Um, to give it lots of flavor. So let me grab what I need for that. I'm going to start off by putting some plant-based butter in my pan. And I really like cooking with this particular one. It's pretty easy to find now. You can even find it at Walmart. Um, it's avocado oil butter. It's great for cooking. It's avocado oil, so it can handle high heats. Uh, it's a great flavor, and then it comes packaged in sticks. So when you're using or making a recipe, it's really easy to choose the correct amount that you need. So I'm going to start off by putting about three quarters of the stick in my pan. 
might need a little more later. We'll see. I'll keep it handy. Aha. Press the start button. It works much better. <laughs> Okay, so to the butter, I'm going to add some onions. I keep moving my stuff around, so now I don't know where anything is, so bear with me. But I'm going to put some diced onion. Onions and garlic, they're going into just about everything. They make everything taste great. Hopefully the uh, smell of today's menu doesn't linger too long after today <laughs> for the library patrons. One of my favorite products, because I use it so many different ways, is um, this particular brand of chipotle peppers. And it's, I call it a chipotle paste. I mean, the label says diced chipotle peppers, but it's thick, it's, um, it's almost like it's been pureed, so it, it's like a paste. Um, one of my most popular recipes on um, the YouTube is a chipotle drizzle. And I put that on everything. Um, so if you already make that at home, that's a great accompaniment to any of the dishes we're making today. But I love it because it comes in a glass jar. There are a lot of brands of chipotle and adobo out there, but they come in a can. And a little goes a long way. So you can never, or I can never use a whole can at a time. So storing it becomes a problem. But if you buy this neat little glass jar, it can stay in the refrigerator for months. So very fond of this one. So as my onions are sauteing in the butter, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this uh, chipotle paste. So it's probably about a teaspoon. Like I said, a little does go a long way. Can, it's very spicy if you use a lot of it, so you know, use it based on your own taste. Do we like spicy here today? Yes? Okay, good. Good answer. You have what in the fridge? Oh, really? <laughs> Quite a few hot sauces in the library already, huh? That's great. No, I actually, um, Smart and Final. Sometimes Walmart has it. Yeah, it would be great in the soup. And if any of you are new to Mexican cooking or cooking with peppers, um, what is a chipotle pepper? Chipotle pepper is actually a jalapeno pepper, which most of us are familiar with, the green ones. But they've been fire roasted. So they maintain the heat of the jalapeno, but they 
um, take on sort of a smoky richness with the uh, roasting process. So same pepper, it's just been treated differently. Okay, my onions are starting to get soft, so it's time to throw in some garlic. And now, Now what I'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit of flour over the mixture. And this is how you make a basic roux, R-O-U-X. Um, it's used in cooking to thicken soups, sauces, different things. I'm just going to sprinkle it over my hot mixture. And I'll cook the flour, just making sure it's mixed in well. So I just realized this is actually how my uh, chipotle macaroni and cheese starts off. Could have made that today too, but so many recipe ideas, so little time. <laughs> What's that? That's right, the pasta and the chipotle. So flour is actually a raw ingredient, and it can actually make you sick if it's not cooked all the way. It's rare, but you can get um, you can get sick from raw flour. So if you stir it well and it bubbles in the hot butter, it's thoroughly cooked. I'm going to add just a tiny smidge more. So yeah, some onions, some garlic, some chipotle paste, and then uh, you do the next step, which is adding a little bit of plant milk, and then you start adding in the shredded cheese, and there's your macaroni, ch chipotle macaroni and cheese sauce. So it's important to add the uh, liquid bit by bit. busy this morning to eat and uh, I'm starting to get hungry. It smells pretty good. If I do say so myself. <laughs> okay. Yep, I've got the consistency I want so I'm going to turn the heat off and I don't know if you can see it but it's it's thick, and it's going to be absolutely fabulous when it's smeared on our tortillas before we put our ingredients on there. So, but you know what I forgot to do? It needs a little salt. And I forgot. Just going to add a little bit of garlic salt, and it will be delicious. Okay, 
I'll let that cool a little bit. I'm gonna move it over. And I'm gonna switch my cooktops out. it that way is it so okay I think it's gonna work so the first one we're gonna make is the one that uses our chipotle roux that we just made Put a little grapeseed oil in my griddle. I'm going to turn it up to about 350. And as that heats up, I'll get everything ready. I've got my tortillas here. I like them both. Um, Grapeseed oil is a lot less expensive than the avocado oil. So I generally get that, um, especially when I'm making large quantities and I need a lot. But um, I like them both, and I probably, if it was more cost effective, I would just use the avocado oil. But they're both great. They both are neutral in flavor. They don't overpower whatever you're cooking with. You can use them in sweet things, savory things. And they both have that really high burn point, so they're great for frying or cooking or browning. So just about there. I'm going to lay out some tortillas. And this is where the burned fingertips come in. I didn't get to completely avoid those today. And I'm going to take uh, a spoon, a clean spoon. And I'm going to spread a little bit Stay. a little bit of our chipotle sauce on each tortilla. These are pretty simple. I know the roux is a little bit more than you might want to do some nights, but um, I think it's worth it. It doesn't take that long. And the rest of it just comes together really quickly. I browned some Beyond Beef with just a little bit of uh, taco seasoning. Um, I use this one today. I found this at Costco, and it's um, pretty tasty and pretty easy. And it doesn't have uh, some of the preservatives and things that the, the little envelopes often have. So I'm going to just put a little bit on each taco.
I would normally build these a little differently, but what I'm trying to do is uh, reheat my stuff that I had to make ahead of time a little bit by putting them on the tortillas on the grill like this. And then my potatoes. Turn that off and make the last component of our recipe. Cabbage, yes. So I have a mixing bowl and I have some rice vinegar and just a smidge of sugar. Smidge of sugar in the bowl. Gonna dissolve the uh, sugar crystals, and that was vegan sugar, by the way. Gonna dissolve the sugar crystals in the rice vinegar. I'll get these out of the way. And what did I do with my chipotle paste? It's still here. Here we go with the chipotle paste again. I'm gonna make some chipotle coleslaw to go on top. So we're using chipotle sauce, or chipotle's two ways in this recipe. And now a little bit of mayonnaise. Plant-based mayonnaise, of course. And those of you that have taken the class before know that I like this brand, the Best Foods Vegan Mayonnaise. It has the best flavor, best consistency of all of the ones that I've tried. Okay, I'm gonna throw some green onions in there. And a little bit of shredded cabbage. I know raw cabbage is normally used, but I like to do things a little differently. Just another opportunity to add a little more flavor. Tend to put it in the soup. Let's see. I'm gonna switch over to my tongs. Okay. How am I doing? Oh my gosh, look at me running late again. TJ. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just cannot seem to master the uh, one hour class. Everything else is pretty fast, I promise. Okay, so let's put these together. These great little tortillas here. They're all warm. I'm running out of room, but I'm going to take them and top them with a little bit of the slaw, fold them, and devour them. Aren't 
Stay cute. I'm running out of table space, so I'm combining the enchiladas with the tacos here, so hope nobody minds too much. Two more over here. Okay, we've got this. All right, there we go. Get this out of the way. And I'll move this, and we're on to our next type of taco. The heat goes back on. I'm going to add just a little bit more oil to the griddle. Here we go with the tortillas again. And I have more tortillas here. Three fifty. Yeah. Maybe I'll do two more. Okay, so with these, I'm going to add a little bit of white cheese. Just spread it out on each one. And this brand, uh, I mixed it up. This brand is Violife and they make really nice products. Um, at home, we just made these with the Miyoko's fresh mozzarella that I used in the last class. And that worked really well with these tacos also. But, uh, our white cheese. And I made somewhere a jackfruit birria filling. And if you haven't experienced jackfruit yet, give it a try. It sounds really weird, but look what it does when you cook it. It makes, it looks like shredded meat. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this mixture on each taco. And for the recipe for this, I told you to buy a can of um, jackfruit, but I didn't tell you where to find it. Um, Trader Joe's has a fabulous version of it. And I'll show you what that looks like just as soon as I get this done. I also wanted to say I'm new to birria 
And I learned the basics from my uh, friend Evelyn's grandmother, Ramona. So thank you for sharing your family um, recipe for making birria. And those are going to heat up nicely. Fold these each in half. So these are made two different ways traditionally. One, just like I'm doing, where they're just fried until the outside is nice and crispy. But sometimes the uh, tortilla is actually dipped in the birria sauce, and then it's fried. So you get an extra explosion of delicious flavor that way. Okay. So I wanted to show you what the jackfruit looks like. It comes in a can like this. That's a picture of a jackfruit, but it doesn't do it justice. I know um, quite often uh, Gelson's Market in Rancho Mirage has whole jackfruit in their produce department, and it's not little. They're enormous. They're like this. They're like a giant watermelon shape and size. Um, so unless you want to feed an army, I recommend just buying the canned ones. And I saved a piece of it from um, the filling I made earlier. So this is what it looks like straight out of the can. And what I recommend is just taking your fingers and just kind of mashing it apart like this. And you see how it shreds? And do that with it before you drop it in the pan to cook. And there you have your shredded meat substitute. Pretty cool. Okay, so these are traditionally served with uh, onions and cilantro and a squeeze of lime. So I happen to like them with a little sour cream and onions and cilantro and a squeeze of lime. So I'm going to put this here for anyone to try. I imagine some pico de gallo would be pretty delicious on there too. But I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. These cute little crispy tacos. And yep, there go my fingers. Yeah, it's hot sizzling here. <laughs> I do. Oh well. All right. All right, not pretty, but they're off the heat. Okay. There they are. Serve them with a squeeze of lime, pico de gallo, or diced onion and cilantro. They're absolutely out of this world delicious. Do I have time for a really quick one more thing? Yes, of course. Thank you. All right, quick dessert today, really quick. I promise. All right, let's see, put that aside. All right, so I'm just gonna make a really quick, light and easy dessert. And it's going to be fresh fruit with a chamoy sauce. Would you like to say it properly for me? Chamoy. Oh, <laughs> chamoy. <laughs> Truly? Okay. Okay, excellent. All right. Chamoy. I was a pro and I didn't even know it. So um, apricot jam is the base of it. So I'm going to put about three quarters of a cup of apricot jam in a bowl. 
And then I'm going to squeeze some fresh lime juice into it. Should have brought my fruit juicer. There we go. Okay, so a lot of recipes, a lot of people put salt in it, but I don't. I don't think it needs it. But it's just going to be the jam, the fresh lime juice, and believe it or not, chili powder. And I'm going to use both kinds. I have the ancho chili powder. And I have the California chili powder. And it makes just an interesting, delicious flavor combined. And you just pour it over a fruit salad. And I know melons are really commonly used, watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew. But today I have some uh, watermelon and I have some pineapple chunks and I have um, some apple. I actually have a Lucy Glow apple today. Those are really special. You can only find those this time of year here. I don't know if you can see the red flesh in the apple. They're absolutely delicious. Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Lucy Glows, they're hard to find. So worth looking with the red inside. Oh, it looks like this needs a little bit more lime juice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is it. There's my fruit. I'm gonna mix it up, coat all the fruit. And I know this, I'm usually um, very uh, fussy about buying things when they're in season. This is not the time of year when I would normally buy a watermelon. December, but um, honestly, the sauce disguises uh, <laughs> any uh, deficiencies in your fruit, so it doesn't matter. Add whatever you like. But there you go. A little spicy, a little tangy, a little sweet. Really delicious. It's a really light, nice dessert. We're all set. I'm sorry, library. <laughs> Once again, I'm so ashamed. I can't seem to get the timing right, but um, I've tried. And uh, I hope uh, everybody enjoys the food today. Hope you give it a chance. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you again so much, <laughs> Chef Shannon. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate having you. It's been a great uh, series of events, programs, and we'll definitely talk about doing some more things in the future. So oh, thank you. please do give us feedback if you have any. This is our first time doing this particular kind of program, uh, and we are excited to see where it can lead us in the future. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Again, we'll have a recording up on YouTube in a week or so. And everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you.